In this video, I'll be talking about cell references. Now this will go hand in hand with the formula tab. So follow along with me with the workbook that I've provided for you. Now here in the formula tab and in the cell reference section, you'll see a table. We have the references. We have a little contribution made of sort of business deal. And down here we have our contribution, so each savings that will be growing throughout. So starting with this, the references, we have our relative cell references, which is just the row and the column, just like how you have here. So if I click on D8, you have D8. Very simple, right? Well, now we have the absolute cell reference. Now the absolute cell reference helps with formulas. Now as you see here in my little business proposition, or my business growth, sorry, I started with an initial investment of $5,000 and I did it at 3%. So every year I gained 3%. Now if you go into the formulas tab and you go up to the formula auditing and click show formula, you will see the formula in which I have enabled each year to go by. Now, let me show you how I got there by deleting all of this and showing you how you can get to that same step. So for my equation for 2017, I have an initial investment of $5,000. So this equation will be done by order of operation. So there's a lot of brackets and bed mass involved in it. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to put bracket 5000 or the cell number. So it will be D9 times. And now I'm going to do another bracket because this is where order of operation comes in. We're going to do 1 plus and our income growth. So we have it at 3% and I'm going to close that bracket and close the whole equation. So now my equation is equals cell D9 which is $5,000 plus 1 sorry times 1 plus C16 which is 3% and I'm going to click enter and that is how much I grew within from 2016 to 2017. So now if you see, usually like how we did the pattern in the first getting started at the beginning of this course, I was able to let Excel do all the work for me and input the rest of the months. But here is not the same. So if we drag this out, say to 2023, you'll see that it's not the same. Now this is a problem because that's not what we want. What we have to do is we have to click on show formula, go back to our 2017 equation, and what we have to do, we have to input dollar signs before C and after C. So this is the absolute cell reference. So this will be embedded within the equation just like the 5000 is. So now that I've changed my formula, it's still the exact same product that we had. But watch what's going to happen now that we embedded the right formula. You'll see that Excel is doing all the work for me now. So now I don't have to enter each formula manually because it's already embedded so that it will keep going by itself. So as you keep going, it will keep going by itself as well. So now we have all of our investments up until 2034 and we see how much more we make. And as you see in our medium risk, we have another equation which I have already inputted, but I will go over again. So for our medium risk, we have cell C, C10 times 
1 plus C17, our savings. And then we close the operation and we add D9. Now the only two that are fixed here is our initial and our savings contribution. Watch what happens when we go over to the next cell. The only cell that is fixed within this equation is our savings. And as you see, it is highlighted in red. Now if we drag our equation over, you'll see what happens next. So now we have it as D10 times 1 plus C17, which is our savings again, plus E9. So this is E9. So it's actually adding on to what we invested in and what we got back in 2017. So if you take off the show formula, you'll see how much we actually made in 2017. And again, you can keep going all the way till the end. And you'll see how much you actually do make and how much you get back by 2034 at the same rate of the income growth and the savings. Stay tuned as next we'll be looking at how to at how to use printing tools. In this video I'll be working with the simple formulas and operations within Excel. Now if you're following along with me at home, please select a section that is called working with formulas. As you see there is a chart and we have different operations here. So we have formula operations, which is just the basic operations that you're able to do within Excel. So we have addition, which is plus, subtraction, which is the dash, multiplication, which is the star, division, which is the slash. So far for today, we'll be looking at, in this video, is addition and subtraction. Now, as you can see here, we have three different functions that we're able to use. Now, if I want to input it, the information, so I have 10 plus 20 plus 30, I can do so just like that. And as you see, I have my product. And same thing with subtraction, I could do 100 minus 10 minus 20. We put an equal sign in the front. You always need to have the equal sign in front or the operation will not work. And you click enter and you get 70. So that's the longer version of it if you do wish so to do it like that. But there is an easier way in which you can do this. So again, starting with our equal sign. And here I am going to select the cell number. So I could either type it in, say if I want to E3, or I could simply click on the cell. So I want to do E3, and on your keypad, enter plus F3 plus G3. And click enter, and you get your same product. Now this is just a shortcut in which you can use instead of having to type in everything manually. And again, I'll show you with subtraction, you can do the same thing with the same exact process. 100, subtract 10, subtract 20. And again, you'll get the same quotient. You'll get the same sum that you did before. Stay tuned next, as next we'll be looking at multiplication, division, and exponential. In this video, I will still be going over the formula operations within the working with formulas section within the document that I have provided for you. In this one, we'll be looking at multiplication, division, and exponential. So for multiplication and division, it's the exact same formula that we had used previous in the other video for addition and subtraction. 
So all you have to do is remember always the equal sign or else your operation will not work. So equals and again you can do 5 plus 5 times 6 times 8 if you'd like and you'll get your sum of the numbers or again you can always do equals e5 times e6 times sorry e5 times f5 times g5 which will equal exactly what you got before and if you actually look in the formula bar at the top you actually see the breakdown of the operation so that's the actual formula but when you actually have it in results you only have the results and same thing if you did just 5 times 6 times 8 equals in the form in the formula bar you actually see the numbers instead because that's what we inputted and same thing if you do it with division your quotient will automatically be 0 0.5 and again if you look in the formula bar this is actually what we typed in but if you do it like how we did before with addition and subtraction and multiplication by selecting the cells you will see that it actually says the cell names so we'll do equals e6 divided by f6 divided by g6 and you enter and it's actually 5 and once again here in the exponential we have the little up arrow key as our operation for the formula so if we want to do equals 2 of 3 we'll get 8 and we can also input 4 if we'd like and our new sum would be 4096 now again you can always just select a cell and you don't have to go and select these cells alone if you want you could do let's say we want to do equals 2 power of 3 to the power of 100 so we have e7 to the power of f7 to the power of e4 so once we click enter we get our new total so let's do it again with the numbers that I have inputted power of, power of 4096 stay tuned as next we'll be doing statements for our formula operators in this video, I will be showing you how to use the formula operators for word statements. So as you see here, if you're following along at home, we have we have six different word operators that we can use. Here we have we can do equals and again we could either do five fifty-five equals 35 equals 85 so what this is going to do is because we can see that 55 plus 35 plus 85 does not equal it will say false but say if we went into our cells and we changed 55 and to 55 and instead of doing it how we did it before where we entered it in this way I'm going to do it equals E8 which is equal to F8 which is also equal to G8 
and this watch you say that it is and this watch you say that it is true so as you see it says it's true now same thing if we do something else so if we did instead of those two cells we did 100 equals 100 equals 100 we enter it we see that is also true because they are exactly the same now the next one down we have greater than and this will be using the arrows so here we'll do 60 is greater than 55 and when we click enter it says it's true but if we do it the other way say if we did equals 3 is greater than 55 it will say it is not so if we do it here we will see that equals 3 is greater than 55 in which case it will say it's false. Same thing here, only with the less than symbol, which is the arrow going the other way. We'll do equals 85 lesser than 85 is lesser than 90, in which case it is true. And again, you can go back and forth and do it the other way with other numbers. Here in this next one we have it so that it is greater than or equal to. So for this one do equals 30 or e11 is greater than or equals to 55 which is F11. And as you see, it is false. Now if we did it the other way, say if we did equals to 55, which is F11, is greater than or equals to 30, it will come out true because it's either or. So 55 is greater than but it's not equal to 30 is not greater than but it or equal to so it is false whereas 55 is greater than and same thing down here we have lesser than so it's just the other arrow so we can do 44 so we'll do equals 44 e12 less than or equals to 9 in which case it's false because 44 is greater than 9 but if we did 9 equals 9 is less than or equals to 44 it's true because 9 is lesser than 44 and for this last one it is not equal to at all so here we'll be doing equals 92 or E13 which is the cell number does not equal to 46 which is true but if I did equals to and again you don't always have to use the same numbers as I am I'm just doing it because it's already put like that but you can use any numbers within the cells so for this one we'll be doing E6 does not equal to E4 and it says it's false because they are equal to each other. Now down here we can always combine our equations and our operations together. So if you do as I am within the workbook that I have provided for you. You can do equals 
let's do 100 times 3. And here you can always enter brackets just as if you would for bed mass, like if you're doing an equation. You can do 2 divided by 60 bracket power of and again just play around with it if you already have a formula that you already know you want to do go ahead and try it so we could do 92 times 2 divided by 4 subtract 20 plus 30 and when you click enter you will see it says 56 and again you can always enter the numbers manually if you need to or you can select the numbers if you already have cells for them so you can do 56 subtract 45 You know, equals 56 subtract 45 plus 93 times 5 divided by 4. And you get the total of your numbers. And again, in the formula bar, you will have your formula that you have inputted into the cell. Stay tuned as next we'll be looking in the next tab over which is the cell reference. Here it's much more in depth so please I urge you to follow along at home with the workbook that I have provided for you.